All right, ladies and gentlemen, dudes, Papa here. Let's go ahead and get started real quick with some channel news. First off, first bullet, look at that. I apologize. I am so sorry it's taking me so long to get back here. But you know, it's been a crazy, hectic uh, winter holiday season. There's been some pretty interesting political stuff going on, and it has it's been a while since I've been back here. So I'm finally back, and let's get cracking. Look at that second bullet there. New Year's hobby resolutions. Uh, honestly, this last year has been pretty amazing. Um, started getting into YouTube a little bit. Officially started my company. Had an amazing, amazing first year as far as the commissions go. Started the hobby house. Did all kinds of Ask the Artist interviews. Uh, made a lot of great people. Made a lot of good friends. And it's been awesome. It's been a fantastic year. In spite of all the craziness, in spite of all the nonsense, 2020 was actually a really good year for my company, and for mini painting and miniature hobby in general. Let's go ahead and look at what we hope 2021 will bring us. Read off mine first. I hope to produce at least 30 videos in uh, 2021. That's just over one every two weeks. Number two, I'd like to reach a thousand YouTube subs. Ideally, I'd like to be partnered, but we'll see where it goes. Next, I want to assemble and paint 2,000 points of Hellwargs. Now, Hellwargs are a custom chapter that I made up. I will get into that a little bit later, not on this video, but another video, and when I announce them. So 2,000 points of that, drop it on Sharpie, don't worry about that. Uh, play, 2,000 point game of 9th edition, I'd love to do that, I've only been playing Kill Team, and I've been getting stomped pretty religiously. My buddy Logan, he he, he takes my lunch money, that's for sure. Uh, maybe if I had a few more guys in there, I, I don't know. I'd still love to play though, it'd be awesome. Next, I'd like to reach 2,000 Instagram followers and 1,500 Facebook likes, just because I think it's kind of cool to grow as a, not only as a company, but as a community. Number seven, I'd like to hold at least one painting stream. This is kind of made impossible because of my internet, but who knows, maybe we'll get some out here. Next, I'd like to host a Discord painting competition. I talked about it before, but maybe this is uh, a good time to start. Over the next year, I'd like to participate in at least five painting competitions all online or maybe a local gaming store, but there's not really much around me. Uh, finally, I'd like to learn how to play guitar. That's not really a uh, miniature painting hobby, but it's definitely a hobby. I've had one, I've had a guitar for about uh, 12 years and I've actually gotten worse over time because I've not played anything. So it's kind of fun to, fun to learn how to play guitar. Now we're gonna look at Space Toy. His resolution is to play more games with his kiddos to finish Gloom Spite and Stormcast Armies. To elevate his painting standards, participate in a painting class if possible, uh, thanks to this good old COVID, and he'd like to improve freehand skills. Next, Cryptic Sun Studios wants to finish their Salamander army. He wants 5,000 points of his 30k Ultramarines. He wants a Zone Mortalis Force for his 30k Night Lords. He wants two Age of Sigmar armies, Deepkin, and he has yet to decide the other one. Uh, maybe he'll, he'll let us know. And he wants to establish his 30k Knight household. He'd also like, in the realm of 40k, to get his Necron and Tau armies to 3,000 points. He wants to run a 30k-centered RPG game with a group of his friends. He'd like to really increase his social media presence and get a more focused and organized hobby space. While Goblin wants to just stick to one army. Man, I hear you. Uh, last year was crazy. I got a ton of Necron, Space Marines. I got... A bunch of chaos and i got a bunch of nurgle stuff and then i got astro militarum a couple things here and there um it was just a weird year of just buying everything that i saw and then putting it in the shelf <laughs> so i hear you there buddy happy heretic would like to start and grow his youtube channel i think he already has three videos up so that's that's really good and they've all been really good I, I appreciate being able to actually hear him i have to say he, you seem pretty comfortable happy heretic so that's good it's a it's a good way to be Mtech Cave. Michael wants to double his inventory and quadruple his sales, and I'm sure he'd like to gain a little bit more mobility on his uh, exploded arm and shoulder there. Or I think it's his elbow, but uh, hopefully you're healing up better. I know that you said you're going to go to you're in physical therapy and stuff now, so hopefully that that means we're on the path to healing. Battle Standard Painting said I'd like to paint a model in non-metallic metal like to raise the likes on Facebook and Instagram to 120 likes or follows. Um, and it really surprises me that, that there's, I'm not sure if it's a marketing thing or what, because I mean, honestly, the quality of work that you put out there, man, you should be significantly higher. Maybe we need to look at uh, how, you're, how you're reaching out. 
maybe we can help you. He said he'd also like to purchase the Frontier Wargaming paint case. That thing is really sick. He said he'd also like to produce a first episode for his YouTube channel. That would be awesome. I know, especially the way you're tearing it to look, it'd be kind of cool to see what's going on there. And then you want to start a studio army. That is going to be awesome. Finally, the painting coach said he'd like to grow the YouTube channel to 30,000 subs. That is an awesome goal, man. Uh, wants to raise Instagram to 2,000 followers. I also like to learn to sculpt digitally. Also wants to paint that Imperial Fist army. He said he'd love to pursue a Loot Studio sponsorship. Now, if you haven't already checked them out, Loot Studios is an incredible, incredible company. They have an amazing program. I think it's their, I don't think it's a Patreon. Or actually, you just go to lootstudios.com and you sign up that way. But they have some of the coolest releases every month. Just go ahead and check them out if you haven't already. He said he'd like to 3D print something of his own creation. He wants to improve his painting skills and upgrade his airbrushing skills. Now, if you are someone who's part of the hobby house and you haven't yet put your resolutions in our new year, new hobby resolutions channel, go ahead and do that. If you're not a member of the hobby house and you're just watching this video because you like seeing talented people put some stuff out, then go ahead and put your resolutions down below. Uh, ideally, what I want to do is I want to be able to keep an update of these resolutions and add new ones as people join the hobby house and post them in their video. I'd also like to announce when someone meets a goal. That way we can have kind of a little mini celebration on our channel. Uh, it's a good way to build community and a good way for all of us to keep each other focused and, and accountable for our resolutions. Now let's kick into my projects. Uh, ooh, <laughs> popping right up there. That is true, folks. Um, that is baby number four for good old Papa here. Um, really, <laughs> really earning that title. We are super excited. We had our first ultrasound last week. Baby has a heartbeat. All is good. We'll find out in a couple months what it is. Uh, last baby we did not find out and that was torture. So we're not going to do that again. But that is our first work in progress right there. Uh, next, I decided this is a bus from Loot Studios, actually. Uh, I wanted to try to see how far I could push the contrast. So I did a lot of blue and purple in the shades all the way up to a bright, bright yellow in the, the highlighted areas. And then I used kind of a, a watered down reddish wash to go inside all the nooks and crannies. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do the horns. Next, all of the Custodes commission has been based. It's finally done. It's completely finished basing wise. Rocks, you got snow, you got some grass tufts, and the rims are black as they should be. Look, and the jet bike dudes are flying now. These are some projects that I finished up. Well, not all of them. The intercessor on the left has actually been kit bashed by my buddy and I'm painting it for him. The redemptor in the middle with the dead blood angel down below his little leg pieces. That's something I finished a while ago, but I want to take better pictures. And then I finally finished Mephiston. Uh, that's about a year and a half, almost two years in the waiting. No, no, I, I bought it for him two Christmases ago and I gave it to him this Christmas. So only a year. Pfft, I don't know what you're whining about, bud. And here is the Chaplain with Jump Pack. This is actually one of the first models I ever painted. Uh, well, at least ones that I was pretty proud of. I think it was definitely within my first 10 models I've ever painted. Uh, but I, I took it back from him. I magnetized the base here so he'd be able to actually use it in a game, but then I made it kind of like a little diorama with an orc shooting up at him and him about to get croziest. Okie doke, let's check out these works in progress. First up we have Sasha. I'm not sure what this model is, but I like it a lot. And it looks like he's trying a different form of non-metallic metal, but it not being metal. I'm not really sure if it's a kind of a jadey type armor or if it's like a, just a I don't know, but I like it a lot. And that base looks sick. That plinth base looks really cool. Next, Luna Wolf 40K, getting a little fire team here prepped and readied. Shades of War Studios, kind of showing off his basing technique from the different texture paint, letting it dry, and then dry brushing it, adding tufts and snow, and then tracks of blood. Yikes. Here is some terrain being worked on. I actually really love this color scheme. I've never seen it bright like this before. It's, it's a cool contrast between the, the almost the alabaster stone and then you have the coppery ornamentation with the almost jade style 
stone. I think it looks great, man. Well, group of people that paint together. Next, we have Space Toy and this nightmare of a demon thing. I think this is for his uh, eldest child, but it looks cool. I think you're talking about using oils for this one, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this thing will haunt my dreams. Here's Space Toy back at it again with non-metallic metal. I love this uh, miniature. I think you actually said where it's from, and I would love to print this off, but re realistically, I have no more space for anything. I've printed off so much stuff that uh, it's just, it's not a good, it's not a good time for anything storage in my house. But your stuff looks good. <laughs> space Toy also has Dire Chasm. I think you're talking about some Dire Chasm models here. I like that. I like the, the colors, at least having that bright pink purple there. I think these are the Hedonites of Slanesh or some kind of a thing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm talking about the same thing. But whatever it is, they look like they're some weirdos. But speaking of weirdos, what are these bright? Are those paintbrushes? Or are those like pickup sticks? I don't know. You have to tell me, Space Toy. I'm curious. I like your stuff here, but I'm more curious about these 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 things here. Coming over here, I don't know what game this is. I like, ooh, clicking all them buttons. Hold on, back up. Is that Agriland Earth? Or is that like your own mixture? Or is that, it's, I don't know. I think it looks, I think you, I am really impressed by the big pieces. I normally get these tiny cracks here. I'm not sure how you got, is it just really thick? I don't know. You have to tell me your secrets, man. I don't know what game this is, but Cyber Cowboys. This is like a Minotaur tractor. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's some Gloom Spite gets peoples. I like the coloration. These are, like these models always look so silly. Sometimes these guys look like they're having a great time. This guy looks terrified. Goblins are such a weird faction, I think. They're just so... It's a mixture of... I wonder if people that are having fun like this are just truly insane. And this guy's like... Hasn't got there yet. I don't know. Maybe he's a new recruit. I like that. There you go with that crackling earth stuff again. So did you put these on the base first and then put crackling earth down? I like it. Hellhound minis. Look at this. Is this? Oh, there's that. I think this is the beetle, right? You got a branch coming up and a swinging bell. I'm super excited. I hope, I hope you use those metallic paints because I've seen a ton of really cool stuff on this beetle. Brush for hire, working on a was it a a saurian or a you know lizard lizard folk? That's a sick model. That's a really cool model. And there he goes again with the color. I like this coloration in the pattern here on the frills. Great job, man. Oh, and there's those bright pinks again. You and your bright pinks, love it. Pixel Mini Forge, working on this really cool model here. There's actually a lot of really good community or group feedback. It's actually pretty cool. Put a question in the uh, the painting advice channel and people were helping him out and I think it looks great. And then he was talking about how he went back and did this base. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, this base gives me nightmares. I don't know where this thing is, where it like hatched and went off to, but that looks like spider web and I hate spiders, so. But the base looks really good. Next up, we have Cryptic Sun Studios with these two miniatures. He's going to send to the stripper, um, the solvent, not the profession. And then over here, where he's working on his 30K, looks like Ultramarine's army. That's awesome. And then here, he's showing off his Night Lord's model. You can't see it because the head is chopped off. But I think we're really excited about this paint handle. Um, just really ergonomic there. Fits the hand. And it has zero sugar, which, you know, in a paint handle, that's that's all you really need. Battle Standard Painting, showing off more of his awesome chaos guys, Night Lord Bros. And then a, this is a Flying Hive Tyrant. I'm not sure about Tyranids, but I do love the contrast of the blue and the red. And I think he was asking questions about these wings here. But uh, I, I really enjoy, <coughs> I'm not supposed to say love, but I really do like the contrast and then the the carapace here it's a really cool look all right now we have lost hammer painting this is my buddy showing off his process for boosting up his grass and 
jungle bases, starting off with the black primer and then the hitting the highlights with the airbrush and then some greens going to the next page, getting some better greens in there. The greatest thing about taking everything to black and then bringing it back up this way is the uniformity. You don't have to always have the same plant because if you buy different plants from different places, they're going to have different colors of green and it's not going to match. So this way, everything is exactly what you want. It. And I think it looks great, man. Shelby Studios with the towel showing off the work that uh, he's been doing here. Man, I love these towel. These are incredible. And it's so uniform. It's so cohesive. Beautiful. And the thing about the towel that I always forget. So I love working on Primaris, right? But towel are so stinking tiny. I did one towel commission and I immediately gained a billion percent more respect for people that can do this to the towel. Because doing this on Primaris Marines is one thing. But doing this on people that are on 25 mil bases, you're right, dog. All right, we have a new member, Minban Market. I actually went to high school with this guy. Uh, he has a pretty cool side gig where he does all kinds of props and just fun cosplay type stuff. He's working on a Boba Fett helmet. He said that he's waiting for a visor to show up to finish the inside. But look at the, the, the battle damage. And then he's got some awesome chrome paint that showed up. And he's testing that out. Now I love Boba Fett, my favorite. BB Miniature showing off his thousand, his 30k thousand sons army. That's some candy apple red stuff right there if I've ever seen it. I can't wait to see it. Man, I love, love again. I am blown away by what, what BB Miniatures can do. And when I see something I've never seen before, like a candy apple red thousand sun, I kind of get nervous, but then I look down and I see who's doing it and I get super excited. All right, completed projects. Here we go. Shades of War Studios with a custom printed D&D miniature here. Look at a little mage. I really do enjoy, I think that's actually OSL at the top here. Correct me if I'm mistaken. Looks good. A little Darth Maul and Death Droids commission here. I like that. That's actually a really straight lightsaber. I'm not a Darth Maul as I've seen the lightsabers all wonked, but looks good. Here comes some pretty advanced, I don't know if these are like assassin droids or whatever, but they look really cool. Yeah. And then you have this disgusting Nurgle dude. Now, see, this is the, the funny thing. Like, I look at your bases, and I think, that's incredible. And then I remember the Commission of the White Scars one where they didn't want any basing. And it's it's sad because the base does so much for the model. It does an incredible amount of extra work that just brings so much to the model. And here's a point. Here's, is that a, a glowing? That's a glowing, nasty head in that pool. Mm. All right, Maurice's miniatures. Hey, we finally have some gunpla here. I actually is because of Maurice's miniatures posts that I got back into watching essentially all of the different spin-offs of, of Gundam Wing on Netflix. And I think they did a great job. I don't know who, who these people are um, or the, the significance of these, but I, I like it. Next, we have some more of these guys, some amazing shields. I think the cool thing about gunpla is that they're poseable. And you get to have a lot of fun with taking pictures. And I don't know. I might get into it. Who knows? Other miniatures here have a gray knight. I love that purple. Oh, I said I love again. I really, really like that purple blade. It's such a cool, looks like psychic energy, which for a gray knight makes sense. And then we have, I think this is the Shadow Sun model. I think it's her name. But I like that gray. I've never seen the gray before. And then I'm not sure who and or what that is, but it looks like a like a blood angel. Probably not. Oh, there's a, there's a little teardrop. Is that Dante? I don't know. I don't know about blood angels, but my buddy is like shaking his head right now. I have some slaves to darkness. I like that metallic green. It's cool. I have a box of slaves. I have a start collecting slaves to darkness. That's another thing I purchased this last year. I like that. Is that a Hero Forge mini? I think it is. I think it's here. I've done a lot of Hero Forge work. I actually have a, a Hero Forge commission right now for a, um, a buddy of mine, and I need to finish it. But I like that. Cool bard. Actually, that bard um, has a very similar idea of the one I'm working on, it, except instead of a beer bottle here, uh, the bard has a giant like stein, and then this cloak actually covers his head. Got a big old beard. And then this is a electric guitar not a acoustic guitar and i painted up like the uh um the van halen guitar so actually it's a blown up version of one that i painted last year for their D, D campaign but i got the stl file and 
got it really made it really big, and then I'm painting it to match the way I painted his D and D guy. But good job, Maurice, and your miniatures. Here's Mint Ben Mark with some finished work here. Looks like a uh, mythosaur comb, and then we have the mounted mythosaur skull with a sign back there. Some 3D printed Beskar, and then it looks like a, a tooth or a little horn here. And I was talking about how one of the things is for props is like trophies, or these look like, uh, like little trophy tassels you'd hang on your armor. He also does vinyl decals, and this is a little wampa fingers here, a droid bone, a tooth. But something else he does that I love is the helmet work. The helmets look incredible, and I think this is the, the, the death watch or the death i don't know that it's something death and then there's the bo katan's helmet right there i love your i love your work man i'm like i'm really excited that you came in here because i gotta start showing it off happy heretic showing off one of his he said in his video his favorite model because it's one that he put together has a lot of nostalgia and it's something that he felt he did a really good job on and it just really brings him back to a, a happy place Boop, 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 boop. happy in the in the the hobby and these we're talking about using some bluish oils over valhalla and blizzard and that gets a cool icy slushy snow look good job man bb managers here with some gloom spite and look at this osl look just just stop whatever you're doing if it's not looking at this you are wrong there is light coming from here and it is shining up here but look at it like light so there's white here, blue transition to green and then yellow. That is so fluid and smooth. Like you, you can look at it and tell this thing is in a cave and the only light is off of weird fungus or other kind of natural bioluminescence stuff. And that's the only way you'd see the colors on this guy. Amazing work. Cryptic Sun Studio showing off his Stormcast Eternals. Look at that incredible gold scale there on the, the uh, tabard. And then that awesome molten lava look on the hammer. I think it's a cool look, man. False miniatures with a warp smith. And I think that looks cool. I think it looks really good. I love the, the Dr. Octopus looking things coming off. And then all the different trophy spikes. And the cool colors. Looks good. You should send a picture of the, the front of it too. So we can see its face and whatnot. Battle standard painting showing off his finished little... I don't know if it's a unit or if this is a couple of units. But showing off the Tyranids he's been working on. Great stuff. Space Toy. Finally finished this female archer. And I said that he suffered a lot of painting mistakes. But I don't see them. I might just be the fact that I think it looks way better than anything I'll ever be able to do. But look, let me look at so For instance, Space Toy. Okay. That looks... Like it's a whole different, that looks like it's straw. Like it's a straw little loincloth. And then you have silk. And you have that, it just feels light and smooth. And then you have what looks, and f looks like it would feel like leather, right? Real cold leather. And then you have the steel. And then you have the snow. And that looks like skin and stuff. So, I mean, it is very, very, very convincing and I know that you hold yourself to a high standard, but man, I love that model. It's a great one. I think it shows just all kinds of different skills and it's a great job. Brush for hire. I don't know the name of this model. It's like a storm lord or storm something or other on a big giant nasty lizard, but that is incredible. Incredible, man. Dorn's arrow finished Ezekiel Abaddon. This mass, the thing is this bust is massive. I wish that there was a reference photo, but just look a couple of videos back and you can see this thing is huge. Well done. Well done, man. And finally, we have Sasha and his hyena here. Now, this hyena was actually highlighted by Artist Opus because I think he used only Artist Opus brushes. Now, I, I broke this up into two slides because I want to show off, number one, the muscularity. Look how each and individual muscle strand is visible. That is incredible work. And the delineation between the hair and then the muscle and other skin and those bright, creepy eyes. And then we have what I think really, really sets it apart. And it's these, this base and the OSL. The concept of 
the water and everything breaking over and spilling out is such a cool concept. And then to have it be this glowing water. And it's cool because you see here, it doesn't, doesn't look like it's that powerful. It doesn't look like it's that potent of a light source. And then you rotate the model and it's like, not only does this, these whites get brighter, but now look at the bottom of the model and the, the side. So that's some truly inspiring work, man. Well done. All right, ladies and gents, that is the end of the work in progress and finish works video number four. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Comment down below if you like something you see. Also, please consider joining the Hobby House. Even if you just want to come in and see and talk to and chat with people, that would be awesome. All right, thank you for watching this video. Bye.